Good morning, folks. We've got a look at space weather, seismicity, the moon, cosmology, and some heliophysics and geophysics. We also have an announcement about our books and more, but we are starting with our star. Dark coronal holes are the primary feature at the moment, but none are significant. We should be expecting the sun to ramp back up from this little breather here over the next week, with the sunspots already coming back. Large arching umbral fields over the limb tell us more is coming as well. Two days ago, we set the earthquake watch. Yesterday, we reported the magnitude 7 in the Philippines, and the larger events continue with the double six-pointer event in Chile. Luckily, those were blot echoes striking the low velocity zone, too deep to cause much damage. Folks, this was cool, or warm, I guess. How about 63 degrees Fahrenheit in several lunar craters? Constantly. And if a stable, habitable temperature isn't fun enough, they say many of these could have caves that would also stay at that temperature. We're on to cosmology next, where at this point it may only be veteran observers who recall that Hubble's deepest galaxy identifications were already presenting problems for the Big Bang and cold dark matter models. The James Webb Telescope is wasting no time in smashing those records, as this one is estimated to have formed right after when they believed the Big Bang happened, forming much more quickly than their models allow. While I applaud the conclusion, I am also wary of using just a couple pixels to make such determinations. Up next, we're talking about the heliospheric current sheet. Always a solid topic as it also brings light to the scaled up version of the galaxy interacting with the sun. And here, we find that the current sheet is pivotal to the particle flux events and ground level enhancements of Earth. Suggested several times, now well confirmed in the data, and interesting contemplation food for our star taking on the galactic current sheet. But speaking of particle flux and forcing, it's ignored here, as is often the case in climate studies, but alas, it didn't matter. When do I applaud a paper that focuses on solar climate forcing and doesn't include the particles, cosmic rays, stellar magnetic fields, or global electric circuit? When they focus only on irradiance and still find that it influences climate. If irradiance has a forcing effect, then how much are they ignoring when it comes to everything else related to space weather? A lot of the topics discussed here are in our books, which Kat has been working tirelessly to bring back online after Amazon purchased the platform we previously used just to shut down competition, but both the digital and physical copies of the book are now available again. The ones that are sold out will be restocked within about a week, and we also have lots of Observer merchandise as well. Both of these links are in the description box below the video, along with our playlists, which are quite helpful if you care to follow what's happening here. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.